Listen only mode. Okay, good morning. And welcome to our Maricopa County Board of Supervisors regular meeting. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes, good. Good morning, thank you. Supervisor Chukri. Here. Supervisor Gates. Here. Supervisor Hickman. Here. Supervisor Gallardo. Here. Chairman Sellers. Here. Thank you. Okay. Well, welcome to our regularly scheduled board meeting where this morning we're going to honor our county's veterans. And Veterans Day is, is really very personal at Maricopa County. It always impresses me when I hear that 10% of our workforce, more than 1,200 employees, are either currently serving or have served in the United States Armed Services. And unfortunately, we won't be able to pack the house with those employees today, but I hope next year we can invite a, lar a larger audience to participate in this event recognizing our veterans. Today we will hear from our two United States Senators and our own county employees who served in the military and then stepped up during the pandemic to make a difference for our local community. But first, I want to introduce Air Force veteran and our clerk of Superior Court, Jeff Fine, to give the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Would everyone please stand? Chairman Sellers, board members, fellow veterans, and distinguished guests, please join me in prayer. Dear God, we come before you as servants of our community with thanks in our hearts for the abundant blessings you have bestowed. And today, as we prepare for Veterans Day, we come before you with special appreciation for those who served us, those stirred by a passion for freedom, who sacrificed to achieve and sustain this great nation, this community, and that which we enjoy. Please help us in unity to together honor the selfless service of our veterans, who gave so much with expectation for so little in return, who often served in harsh conditions, and far from home with no assurance of their return. Today, we ask that their needs be abundantly provided. We ask for their strength to overcome any obstacles and hardships they may encounter as a result of their service. And we ask that they and their loved ones would gain blessings from their service and unselfish love of country. We also pray for our wounded warriors, our heroes suffering from physical and or emotional wounds, those contemplating suicide and those without a home. We ask that they would have the benefit of treatment and assistance needed to overcome such adversity. We also ask for blessings for those who serve our veterans with compassion and care, for their work is so important. And we ask you to please be with and provide for the needs of those currently in military service who protect us from the threats of the world today. Let us cherish our veterans and their families Respect them for what they have done. Thank them for their service and honor them in all that we do. May they be blessed with peace and happiness and may each of our veterans feel honored, not just on Veterans Day, but every day. For those assembled here and now and those at work in public service around us, help us as servants of our community to always be helpful, do what is right, follow our laws, and to act justly, walk humbly, and love mercy. May our nation, our state, and our community flourish. Amen. Amen. You please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Jeff, and thank you for your service. Everyone, please be seated. We will now start today's recognition by listening and watching messages that our two senators prepared for today's meeting. I want to thank Senator Sinema and Kelly for taking the time to prepare remarks for us. Please play those messages now. Hi, everyone. I'm Senator Kirsten Sinema. I'm proud to work on behalf of veterans every day to ensure they have access to the benefits and services they've earned. 
And I'm thrilled to join you all today in honoring Arizona's veterans ahead of Veterans Day. Thank you to our veterans and their families who've chosen to serve and protect this country. As many of you know, I come from a military family, so delivering results for our veterans is personal to me. And as a member of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, I was honored to recently introduce bipartisan legislation expanding mental health awareness for veterans by establishing a Buddy Check Week. Under our legislation, the VA would designate one week a year as Buddy Check Week and work with veteran service organizations, nonprofits, and mental health experts to organize outreach events and educate veterans on how to conduct peer wellness checks. Our bill will also help raise awareness among veterans about available support services. This work follows passage into law of our Bipartisan Veterans Network of Support Act. Our law requires the VA to pilot a program creating networks of support for service members transitioning to civilian life. And our law is named after Arizona veteran, Sergeant Daniel Somers, who lost his life to suicide. Service members leaving military service often face confusing and complicated red tape when navigating their veterans' benefits. Our network of support pilot program educates and empowers our veterans' loved ones about the resources available, helping ensure veterans never feel alone. Arizona veterans and their families make incredible sacrifices to keep our country, state, and communities safe and secure. It is our duty to ensure they get the support they deserve, and I pledge to continue that work every day in the Senate. Thank you, and I hope you have a productive meeting. Good morning, Chairman Sellers, Vice Chairman Gates, Supervisors Hickman, Gallardo, and Chukri, and to everybody tuning in today. I'm Senator Mark Kelly, and I'm grateful to have this opportunity to publicly recognize and say thank you to my fellow veterans. As a Navy combat veteran myself, I understand the kind of sacrifice and devotion it takes to serve our country. I say this often, and I might be biased, but I know that those who join our armed forces, those who put on the uniform and take the oath, they are the best our nation has to offer. It's the honor of a lifetime to continue my service to our country representing Arizona in the United States Senate after serving 25 years in the Navy. The legacy of this Senate seat, previously held by one of my role models and Arizona veterans, Senator McCain, is one of independence and integrity. He worked across the aisle. He stood up for his country and did what he believed was in the best interest of Arizona. That legacy of service will never be matched but it's something I strive towards. That's why I'm working in Congress to keep improving the quality of care we deliver to our veterans and the accessibility of VA services and information to our communities. I'm also proud to serve on the Senate Armed Services Committee, ensuring our military and service members have the support they need to keep our nation safe. When it comes to providing constituent services to veterans and their families, my team stops at nothing to ensure those who have served our country get the answers they seek and the benefits they have earned. We can assist individuals with referrals as well as with a range of other federal issues involving veterans and active duty military, social security, Medicare, the Small Business Administration, IRS cases, immigration, passports, and others. If you are an Arizona veteran in need of assistance, please visit www kelly.senate.gov slash casework for more information. When we have an opportunity to make things right for a veteran, it's especially rewarding. And it's the least we can do to say thank you for your selfless service, your sacrifice, and your dedication to our country. Thank you again, Chairman Sellers and the Maricopa Board of Supervisors for this opportunity to speak with you today. Hi everyone, I'm Senator Kirsten. Hi everyone, I'm Senator <laughs> Kirsten. Very nice messages, thank you. It's often said that service requires sacrifice. We saw this firsthand when COVID-19 came into our community and took hold of our lives. At the county, dedicated public servants worked seven days a week planning, gathering data, protecting the most vulnerable, and informing the public. Many of those veterans are also active duty military. Many of those heroes are also active duty military or veterans serving in the armed forces, 
prepared, serving in the armed forces prepared them to cope with the unexpected and the least, and the last two years have given us nothing but the unexpected. Let me introduce our director of Maricopa County Department of Energy Management, Rob Rowley, and our emergency planning supervisor with the Department of Public Health, Kip Schlum. Gentlemen, please stand. Thank you. Please have a seat and I'll give each of you a bit of an introduction before re your remarks, but I'll start with Director Rowley. Mr. Rowley enlisted in the U.S. Army Reserve in 1991 at the age of 19. He trained at Fort Leonard Wood and transferred to the Defense Language Institute at the Presidio of Mon Monterey where he completed Russian language training. Mr. Rowley then went to Fort Bragg, North Carolina for training in psychological operations. He served more than 14 years in the Army Reserve and California Army National Guard during which time he was deployed to Haiti and Beale Air Force Base. Please welcome Rob Rowley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, so yes, I was uh, asked to give some remarks about my time in the military and how it uh, prepared me for an extraordinary year. And although I am going to make some comments about you know, my own personal experience uh, during that time, I, I do want to make it clear since I have members of uh, uh, Department of Emergency Management with me here in the office and from public health whom I worked very close with over the last year, that uh, yeah, their success was my success uh, during that time uh, working in the Unified Command. And so uh, it absolutely wasn't about me. Um, it was about them, uh, many of whom are veterans, and uh, their hard work uh, certainly uh, did things to, uh, did everything to make that whole thing a success. Um, so I enlisted in the Army when I was 19 years old, and it was an impulsive decision at the time and one that would end up having a profound impact on my life. Now, 30 years later, I remember a small event that occurred on my very first day of basic training that changed how I viewed myself and uh, the world around me. We just finished up a week at what's called reception battalion, and that's where all new recruits go to get their shots and get issued uniform and equipment and complete all your in-processing paperwork. And then when we were all done, uh, all of our worldly belongings and everything we were issued were packed into two very heavy and overloaded duffel bags with one slung over your back and one slung over your chest, uh, sort of making you into a duffel bag sandwich. We were then loaded up onto actual cattle cars and packed in so tightly that you can barely move and driven to our basic training unit. Uh, when we arrived at our barracks, I, I doubt a more intimidating scene could have been deliberately scripted. As the doors to the cattle car were opened up, the shouting began and simultaneously a thunderstorm erupted overhead, uh, complete with lightning and rain, and there were about a dozen drill sergeants waiting there for us and proceeded to shout us into some semblance of formation. And there we spent the next 30 minutes dropping our duffel bags and then picking them up until we could all drop them in unison. And this was only interrupted by sessions of push-ups and flutter kicks until we couldn't do them any longer. And uh, I did not start basic training in very good shape, so this was quite the endeavor. We were finally ushered into the barracks day room where we all had to completely empty our duffel bags so that the drill sergeants could conduct a contraband check. At this time, I was thoroughly exhausted and at the cusp of being sick. I was having a very difficult time getting all of my things back uh, into my duffel bags and I was in danger of being the last one out of the room and uh, being last is a very bad thing in the army. I stood there looking at all my stuff that still needed to be packed up, feeling overwhelmed, helpless, alone, and like I had just made the biggest mistake of my life. It was at that point another recruit came back into the room, someone who I'd never seen before in my life, and started helping me pack my things back into my duffel bags. He then helped me get my duffel bags slung back on and we went upstairs to our new barracks together. It was at that moment I realized that I wasn't alone, that I was going to make it through this and that I was part of something much bigger than myself. And that's saying something considering how big I thought I was at that age. I learned many things during my time in the Army and a lot of it wasn't anything you would call formal instruction. Things like when to keep your mouth shut, how to look busy and walk with a purpose how to wait long periods of time for no discernible reason, how to give respect without receiving it, 
navigating bureaucracy, pulling your weight, and when the only right answer is yes sir or yes sergeant. It's hard to believe that it was 19 years ago, sorry, wish it was 19 years ago, hard to believe it was 19 months ago when we first started the Unified Command to better organize our response to the pandemic. This was new ground for everyone and we were presented with some pretty unique challenges. I already mentioned some of the lessons I learned in the Army, but there were three more that came in particularly handy during that time. The first was how to make difficult decisions with inadequate information. In the Army, you learned that indecision was worse than the wrong decision. So you had to be prepared to take action and then be ready to adjust when necessary. You can't be afraid to be wrong. This felt like almost a daily event in the Unified Command. Each day presented a new problem that had to be overcome. Sometimes decisions had to be made quickly without time for research and deliberation. The second was how to complete the mission without having everything you need. This seemed to always be the case in the Army, but was never accepted as an excuse. The results were often some extremely creative thinking. At the outset of the Unified Command, not having what we needed was almost the entire problem, whether it was obtaining PPE, hiring qualified staff on short notice, or even having a location for the Unified Command itself. Uh, 2020 to 2021 was the year of creative solutions. Gowns made out of airplane airbags comes to mind. This segues to the third lesson, which was dealing with setbacks and never quitting. You've likely seen the pictures of the famous morale posters that were put up in London during the Blitz in World War II that said, keep calm and carry on. The Army had a similar, somewhat less sophisticated sentiment, which is suck it up and drive on. You learned quickly to take your lumps and never quit. Obviously, quitting was not an option in the Unified Command. Our responsibilities were too great for that to even be a consideration. We certainly had our setbacks, but we always adjusted and went back at it from a different angle. Certainly, the military isn't the only place where someone can learn these lessons, but there you learn them quickly and usually at a very young age. And these lessons served me well in 2020. My time in the service was the best and worst of times. I never laughed harder nor experienced greater frustration. But it was an experience I don't know if I would repeat, but I also would not trade it for anything. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. And, and it's so obvious that the, the experience you had in the military prepared you well for the job that you're doing today. And we're so fortunate to have you here at Maricopa County. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Next, I want to introduce Kip Schlum, who is with the Maricopa County Department of Public Health. While he is an emergency planning supervisor, Mr. Schlum is also a US, Arm US Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, having served 24 years. He, tra he trained at Maelstrom Air Force Base and later trained to become a logistics and security forces officer which led to 14 years in command of two squadrons. Mr. Slum had two combat deployments to Iraq and Kuwait, where he had the opportunity to work closely with local communities. Last year, under the Unified Command, he helped plan for the first mass vaccination sites and opened the first COVID-19 isolation hotel in the state. Please welcome Kip Schlum. Good morning, Chairman Sellers and the Board of Supervisors. Thank you for inviting me as well to speak today about my experiences in the Air Force and my military uh, uh, experiences and how it prepared me for this uh, 18 months or now 20 months long uh, pandemic response. Um, first, I also wanted to thank Jeff Fine, who he and I had worked together at Luke Air Force Base for many years and for his invocation and uh, a lot of things he discussed. We went through a lot of these tribulations and military experiences together. So it's nice to see him every once in a while walking across the street from the court building when we were going into Unified Command. So uh, big thing that really helped uh, a lot of us in the military know we have to deal with adversity and changes to the plan right away. So that's one thing that I know uh, I learned, and it was very helpful for here at uh, Unified Command and the pandemic response. Uh, when I first joined the Air Force, 
I lived here, I was grown, uh, grew up in Fountain Hills. I loved the sun, I loved the desert, and I got stationed in Malmstrom Air Force Base, Montana for four years where I have a picture of me standing outside the fur coat in negative 72 degree weather, getting ready to go for my 24 hour uh, alert uh, shift down in the missile silo about 200 feet underground for about 24 hours. So in the snow and in, in rain and all different types of weather. So I was 22 years old trying to respond to that and uh, making the best of a bad situation, at least uh, what I observed was a bad situation at the time. Um, and then again, more recently, during my recent deployment to Kuwait, uh, really re interacting with the community and, and sometimes uh, when you're in different cultures, you, you find out there's uh, some different things that you, you need to respond to, both culturally and, and uh, in different ways. So I always try to learn the language and try to interact with the, the local culture. And we were uh, meeting with some elders of the tribes and folks around there. And I had learned a couple Arabic words, auras, meaning headache, because you get a lot of headaches when you're in the, in the sun and in the desert. And so uh, they were serving us dinner and we had this wonderful biryani meal of rice and it was goat meat with it and they brought out the head of the goat on a platter and I was like oh ras I know what that word is so I said ah ras I could say what it was and that meant to them that I wanted to eat the head apparently which I did not want to do but the doctor who I worked with every day was sitting right across from me and he's just shaking his head like this and they proceeded to crack open the head and pour the, the brains out on my plate to eat. So I ha was able to kind of shove them around a little bit. I think I may have eaten a little bit of it, but to try and not eat as much as I could and save face for our unit and uh, also give uh, the culturally appropriate response to eating something that was offered to you. So um, a lot of things uh, may be funny, but also just those kind of things really kind of in the military setting, you have to learn to react and, and act quickly. Um, which kind of brings me to my operation with public health. Uh, I remember the call I got from Mitch Latch, who's also another veteran who I work with at public health right across the hall. Uh, I was at the Phoenix Open or Waste Management Open uh, on January 31st, and he called me that day saying, hey, we uh, liked your interview. We wanted to hire you. Can you start in three days? Because we have this uh, SARS-CoV-2, and we've got our first case in the county, and I don't want you to miss our operation. So. I kind of laugh and tell them I didn't miss it, yet I'm still here. So I, I started that next Monday and uh, really was an amazing way to transition from coming from a six month deployment in the military or working with all these different people from all these different backgrounds, uh, Army, Marines, other countries, Canadians, Denmark, uh, English, uh, to get those folks to work together. It's almost, almost like a transition to this pandemic response, working with the Unified Command and a very familiar structure to the military where you have somebody to report to and an objectives and meetings every day to go over what your tactics are uh, to this was a very, very similar uh, structure. So it was easier fit for me to go into that. Um, so uh, when, after talking to Mitch and having that conversation and uh, we're still in, we're still in, we're not in Unified Command, we're still in this pandemic response, as you all know, um, putting out a five to 11 year old vaccine this week, another uh, tactic that we need to go to, but, um, when I was deployed to Kuwait as well, that those experiences where I was a uh, mission support group deputy commander. So we have Ali Asalam Air Base where we are bringing in tens of thousands of, of troops from all these countries and places where they come into this base and they go to combat zones and they come back out. And our, our mission there was to make sure all that ran smoothly, that they got on time on target to that base right away. Um, and that, that while they were at that base, they, were, they had the, some of the creature comforts and food and, and lodging. And we had to work with people from pilots that are make, flying those transportation aircraft every day in and out of theater, getting the troops where they need to be, getting them back safely to my civil engineers and plumbers. I had to make sure that the toilets and the sewage was flowing and it wasn't backing up and we had safe food. So uh, having all those diverse backgrounds, that was kind of where I, where I lived and that's what my job was. And so coming into public health with this response, it wasn't just working with Rob's uh, team with emergency management. Uh, we were also working with uh, Human Services Division, Rachel Milney, who I work with every week at least on our on the hotel, uh, working with the people that have need to be isolated from COVID and having to find them a place to go, both homeless and folks that are just in multi-generational housing here in our own communities that have nowhere to go. Um, working with Zach Shira in the um, supervisor's office to when we were short on PPE and we had to find manufacturers here in the 
in the county and the state to actually make masks and gowns and things like that. Um, and then our own uh, Jackie Sutter, she's one of our oral health, uh, she does dental work and we brought her in and she actually started running that hotel from day one. So pretty amazing to see all those people to come together. I guess we choked up a little bit, sorry. Um, to bring that team together to really respond in the way we did. So um, I just wanna thank everybody in this response. I wanna thank the supervisors for supporting us um, and Leanne and the team for doing everything we needed uh, when we needed something really big, we needed finances or we needed money or people to get this county to respond and help the 4.7 million people that we have to protect. So uh, thank you very much and uh, thanks everybody that helped out. Well, and, and thank you, Kip. And I, I think that it's so important that that we can remind people how valuable the experiences you've had in the military pre help prepare you for the work you're doing today. Uh, I'd like to invite the other supervisors to see if they would like to make any comments. Uh, Supervisor Chukri. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I really marvel at what was uh, stated today, starting with Jeff Fine through our last speaker, and thank them. And you can clearly see that their experiences shaped them. And I think that happens to all of us, but but their commitment, uh, not only to themselves, but to our country and uh, all of the other things that they've accomplished and now are accomplishing for Maricopa County uh, is really something truly to celebrate and be grateful for. And Mr. Chairman, as you know, because of COVID, we, we are celebrating Veterans Day in, in a very different way. And I applaud you uh, for bringing our two U.S. Senators into the mix this morning. And really, it's allowing us to contemplate and appreciate uh, this, this celebration in a different way than we've done in the past. So I want to thank you, too, and my fellow colleagues, uh, and to uh, both the, the fine gentlemen uh, who are part of our Maricopa County family for the service to our country and now uh, their service to Maricopa County. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Vice Chair Gates. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would echo um, all your comments and Supervisor Chukri's. Um, we, we always have a special Veterans Day celebration here at Maricopa County. I think it's one of the, the great things that we do here, you know, many times it being outside a, a larger in-person gathering but uh, this is a very special uh, recognition and celebration of our veterans. No better illustration of that than, than to hear from Robert and, uh, and from Kip this morning and how they've taken that experience in the military and really helped to be key members of the COVID response. And, uh, and again, they represent so many um, veterans who work for Maricopa County, help to make Maricopa County the great place that it is. And on a personal level, on Veterans Day, I always have a, think very fondly of my grandfather and his service in World War II. And I think about that greatest generation and all that they did to make our nation the nation that it is. And I feel like many of these veterans now are part of a new greatest generation as they have now faced 9-11, and now uh, with COVID, uh, major significant challenges that, frankly, uh, those uh, you know, in, in our history haven't dealt with issues on this level. And clearly this experience as part of our military uh, helped to make our response here in Maricopa County as great as it was. So I'm grateful to, to all of them and to all of our veterans, not only who work for Maricopa County, but who live here in Maricopa County and make it a great place to live. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Bill. Supervisor Hickman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Echoing the same, uh, I know that my colleagues and yourself uh, feel so strongly that what a fantastic benefit uh, we have uh, to lead a county filled with so many, uh, so many employees that come out of the armed services and reflecting on just both of the comments I've heard today by both central figures of COVID response and how they were able to use their experiences earlier uh, in the military and then putting them into play here uh, with the response. I, uh, I also think it's fantastic listening to them and, and talking about all the people that they worked with. Um, someday, you know, if I ever have time, I'd, I'd like uh, to write a book about this experience too. Um, 
of what I lived through, but it's not going to be a whole lot of me. It's going to be a whole lot of everybody that used their experiences uh, and were able to swing uh, into action, willing to make mistakes because we had no playbook. Uh, that thing about army of one, where you where you train to be a person that makes their own decisions on the fly, uh, is extremely relevant right now, especially with with Robert saying uh, what he had to what he had to say. Uh, and last uh, but certainly not least, um, there are people working right now to protect our our nation. I've had three flights now. I blessed to live in Litchfield Park, right next door to. Uh, the active military base known as Luke Air Force Base. And and those guys, even in training missions, are putting their lives on the line to be prepared that if this country ever has to defend itself. Uh, so don't, don't forget about the active uh, servicemen that are going on. And I definitely don't forget about them because uh, with our workforce development, the moment they get out and want to continue to live uh, in this great state and in this great county, let's, let's get these, let's get these, fabulous women and and uh, and men to be employed with our county um, because we were set up so well for a pandemic and it's because of that 10 percent all of them but that 10 percent bringing decision making capability immediately to the fore was so helpful uh, to this county so so thank you mr chairman thank you clint supervisor gallardo thank you mr chairman <clears throat> and uh, once again just uh, echo many of the comments that have been made by uh, my fellow colleagues, um, terrific story, guys. <laughs> Great stories. Um, to be able to, to uh, hear their experiences uh, right into the in, into the military and some of the, the challenges they had to deal with, and now transforming over into to uh, continuing to to serve uh, the community uh, in the COVID response. So I uh, couldn't salute uh, the fine gentlemen that are here and many of the men and women uh, throughout Maricopa County that work for Maricopa County and throughout our community that have served our country. This is, this is a time where we salute our veterans and, uh, and, and thank them for, for the services that, uh, that, and the sacrifices they have uh, uh, contributed to, our, to, to this great nation. Um, but we gotta continue to remember, uh, many of our veterans uh, are, are, are still struggling um, every day. Uh, let it be dealing with homelessness, uh, medical issues, uh, just trying to get uh, the simple uh, 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 prescription drugs. Um, uh, just I hear a lot of the stories uh, by many of my constituents that are veterans. Uh, they, they tend to come to any elected official that they can talk to to talk about some of their stories with the Veterans Administration and some of the challenges they have. I pass them on to our congressional delegation as well. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we have to uh, continue to keep our veterans in mind, do what we can to help them uh, uh, in their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, we owe them a, a great gratitude for everything they've accomplished. And then to hear the stories that uh, uh, many of our veterans here uh, in Maricopa County continue to serve uh, uh, the constituents here in Maricopa County, it's, just, it's, it's, it's remarkable, particularly in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, uh, just great uh, heroes. They really are heroes. So uh, thank you all for what you have uh, have gone through and what you continue to do for Maricopa County and the people of, of, of this county. Um, we salute you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. And again, you know, I, I, I just, I'm always so impressed with what a great organization Maricopa County is and the fact that we've been able to hire so many veterans contributes greatly to that. And hearing your stories today just reinforces what a, what a value it is to have you on board here. So I wanna thank both of you again for sharing your time with us. Uh, I think it's so important that we hear from our veterans. They put their lives on the line so that we can enjoy freedoms every day. So thank you all again, and Jeff, thank you for leading off our meeting for us. Let's give them another round of applause, please. Okay, as we get to our regular meeting agenda items, uh, I, I just, again, can't thank you enough for all the service and, and to all the employees here at Maricopa County, thank you. 
Okay, moving to agenda item number five, pet showcase by Maricopa County Animal Care and Control. John Reynolds is here to introduce us to the star of today's pet showcase, Harley. John? Good morning and thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Board of Supervisors. And from everybody at Maricopa County Animal Care and Control, thank you to all of our veterans. So today we have Harley, this big boy Harley, he is animal ID 4589797, and he is a very sturdy love bug. If you've ever wanted a barrel-shaped teddy bear, then Harley's <laughs> the dog for you. This senior boy is 90 pounds of solid wiggle material, and nothing gets his wiggles going like getting to greet new friends. He adores spending time with people of all ages and may even do well in a home with kids. His hobbies include showing off his favorite toys and wiggling his nub and tail. He seems to already be house trained. He knows how to sit on cue and he will absolutely stop walking in his tracks if you give him back scratches. Since Harley's a senior, his adoption fees are sponsored by the Thistle <coughs> Pet Foundation, who are helping us out all month long, sponsoring all pets six years and up. Harley is already neutered. He's microchipped, vaccinated, and ready to go home today. Visit pets.maricopa.gov to find out more information about Harley and our other shelter pets in need, or stop by the shelter and say hello. Okay, well, thank you, John. And uh, Harley looks like he would uh, be a, a nice pet for someone. Madam Clerk, are there any announcements or corrections to the agenda? Chairman, Supervisors, I have none for today. Thank you so much. Okay, moving to planning and zoning consent hearings, consent agenda, Hancock Communities, Vistancia West. Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on this item? Chairman, none were received for this item. Okay, the board will now consider planning and zoning consent item six. Mr. Chairman, move for approval item number six. We have a motion. Second. And second. a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under statutory hearings, clerk of the board, item seven, petitions, hearing for the formation of the proposed Del Monte Estates Irrigation Water Delivery District. Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on item seven? Chairman, no speakers, but one registered comment by Katie O'Connor in favor of this item. Thank you. The board will now consider item seven. Mr. Chair, move approval of item seven. We have a motion second. and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under statutory hearings, transportation. Item 8A through C, patent easement abandonments and road files as listed on the agenda. Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on items 8A through C? Chairman, none were received. The board will now consider items 8A through C. Move to approve items 8A through C, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. I'll second it, Mr. And a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under county officers, board of supervisors, nine through 11, resignations from travel reduction program regional task force and from Maricopa County Board of Health. Under clerk of the board, items 12 through 15, special events license for Special Olympics Arizona, Military Assistance Mission Incorporated, and World Bicycle Relief. Item 16, temporary extension of premises patio for the 10 top bar and grill. The board will now consider items nine through 16. Mr. Chairman. So moved, Mr. Chairman, with the comment. Uh, second. We have a motion and a second. Comments. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to thank Annie Foster and Robin Schaefer for uh, their hard work, uh, respectively, on those two task force 
and uh, they were very valuable uh, to the county with their expertise, and I just wanted to make sure I thank them and wish them well. Thank you. Any other comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under constables, item 17, official appointment and oath of office of deputy constable. Under county attorney, item 18, budget adjustment for the extension of funding agreement. Under school superintendent, item 19, IGA between the Arizona County School Superintendents, items 20 through 23, addendum to IGAs with Valentine Elementary School District, Nottaberg Unified School District, Maricopa Regional School District, and Wilson Elementary School District. The board will now consider items 17 through 23. Mr. Chairman, I move approval. Mr. Chair, move for approval. Items 17 through 23 with a comment. We have a motion. Uh, and, I will second it. And a second. Uh, Great. I, I just uh, wanted to uh, talk about item number 17 and uh, thank uh, Presiding Constable uh, Branham for his help with this. It sounds like uh, that he has found a, 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 a winner, uh, somebody that uh, comes with a lot of skill. And uh, I appreciate the person, uh, Mr. Newman, putting in his name for this type of service uh, to the county. So. I uh, just wanted to thank him. Okay, thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under judicial branch, justice courts, item 24, amend a lease, amend lease agreement with J3 Harmon LLC. Under superior court, item 25, fill the gap plan. The board will now consider items 24 and 25. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 24 and 25. We have a motion. Second. And a second. You did get it in that time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under county management, assistant county manager Leanne Bone. Item 26, appointment of Maricopa County Workforce Development Board member. Item 27, IGA with Valley Wise. Item 28, America, American Rescue Plan Act expenditure approval. The board will now consider items 26 through 28. Mr. Chair, move approval of items 26 through 28 with a brief comment. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm really excited to uh, be appointing today um, Scott Holman, who's the Human Resources Director with TSMC to our Workforce Development Board. Um, it's critical as uh, Maricopa County continues to grow as a hub for the semiconductor industry, that we have the workforce available, uh, the talent uh, to support uh, these really giants in semiconductors between Intel, TSMC, and others. So uh, we're grateful for Mr. Holman's willingness to serve, and I uh, think this will be a great addition to the Workforce Development Board. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Bill. And Mr. Chairman, just real quickly, um, just a, a big shout out to, to Valley Wise to be able to partner up with them to provide services. I, I believe you, you may have attended their board meeting. Uh, thank you so much. I wish I'd been able to attend with you, but unfortunately my, my, my calendar wouldn't allow me. But nonetheless, uh, just thank you Valley Wise for the services. Uh, Leanne and her team, uh, working out uh, the agreement with Valley Wise to be able to provide uh, much needed uh, uh, behavioral health uh, services and, and the new uh, the new, new direct services to, for the SMI population as well in the West Valley. So great stuff going on and thank you Valley Wise for being, being a partner. Well, and thank you, Steve. And I, I also want to thank Valley Wise and their chairwoman, Mary Rose Wilcox, for inviting us to their board meeting and also, I want to thank the board for helping to bring more resources into their behavioral health programs. You know, as I pointed out to them when I attended that meeting, 
Uh, I think we all recognize that behavioral health issues have become much more of a focus uh, because of the pandemic. And so the work they're doing is, is really critical. I believe this is a really prudent use of our ARPA dollars. And I also want to thank Leanne for doing all the heavy lifting and getting this done for us. So thank you all. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under county offices, animal care and control, item 29, kennel permit renewal for East Valley Rescue. Under elections, item 30, amend Salt River Project land use license. The board will now consider items 29 and 30. Move approval. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under elections, item 31, precinct committeemen. The board will now consider item 31. Move to approve item number 31, Mr. Chairman. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 No. aye. Any opposed? No. That motion carries by a majority. I only heard two eyes. Two to one. <laughs> I think I heard at least three. <laughs> okay, I'll give you it. Okay. Uh, under Enterprise Technology, item 32, MOU with Arizona Department of Homeland Security. Under Environmental Services, item 33, permanent additions to the fleet. Under finance, item 34, funds, transfers, warrants. Item 35, contract with Greater Phoenix Economic Council. Under human resources, item 36, market ranges. The board will now consider items 32 through 36. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 30, 32 through 36. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under human services, items 37 through 40, agreements and IGAs with City of Surprise, Arizona Department of Economic Security, and City of Mesa. Under procurement, item 41, Contract for Term Civil Engineering and Land Surveying Services. The board will now consider items 37 through 41. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under public health, Admin correction to IGA amendment with Arizona Board of Regents. Item 43, appropriation adjustment and IGA with Arizona Department of Health Services. Item 44 through 48, funding and purchase orders for contracts and IGAs with Arizona Department of Health Services. Item 49, contracts for community testing services for COVID-19. Items 50 through 52, agreements and contracts with Western Washington University, City of Surprise, and Valley Wise Health. The board will now consider items 42 through 52. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under real estate, purchase agreement and escrow instructions. Transportation, item 54, Salt River Project Agricultural Improvement and Power District, easement, Chandler Heights Road. 
Item 55, Road Abandonment Road File Number AB-333. Item 56, Easement Right-of-Way and Relocation Assistance Documents. The Board will now consider Items 53 through 56. Move to approve Items 53 through 56, Mr. Chairman. We have a second. motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under setting of hearings, air quality, item 57, proposed revision of Maricopa County Air Pollution Control Regulation 6-Rule 600, emergency episodes. Under clerk of the board, 58, Don Joe Acres Irrigation Water Delivery District Impact Statement. Item 59, Janet Rose Irrigation Water Delivery District Impact Statement. The board will now consider items 57 through 59. So moved. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under setting of hearings, planning and development, item 60. Planning and zoning setting of hearings. Under transportation, item 61, road file number 5979. Item 62, road file number A703. The board will now consider item 60 through 62. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item 60 through 62. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? That motion carries. Under consent agenda, clerk of the board, item 63 through 64, cancellation of elections and appointments. Item 65, donations. Item 66, treasurer's collections and investment summary. Item 67, stale dated warrants. Item 68, duplicate warrants, 69, tax abatements, 70, secured, unsecured tax roll corrections, item 71, civil penalty appeals for approval, item 72, settlement resolution of property tax cases and claims. The board will now consider items 63 through 72. Move to approve item 63 through 72, Mr. Chairman. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under Board of Supervisors Addendum, Budget Office, item 73, Market Range Budget Adjustments. Under County Attorney, 74, Conflict Waiver for Johnson, for John Masterson, attorney. Uh, under public health, item 75, contract with Arizona Alliance. The board will now consider item 73, 73 through 75. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. We will now recess as the Board of Supervisors and convene as the Flood Control District Board of Directors. Under Flood Control District, item 76, contract with Consultant Engineering, Inc. Item 77, easement, right-of-way, and relocation assistance. The Board will now consider item 76 and 77. Move to approve items 76 and 77, Mr. Chairman. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. We will now adjourn as the Flood Control District Board of Directors and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. Item 78. 
Public comment. Madam Clerk, do we have anything to report regarding public comment email responses? Chairman, Supervisors, we only received three comments, one regarding elections, one regarding invocation at meetings, and one regarding redistricting. All of these comments have been shared with all the board offices. Thank you Thank very you. much. Under Supervisor's summary of current events, board members and county manager, county manager, would you like to speak? Nothing today, Mr. Chairman. Thank other you. Than to thank our veterans that were here today. Thank, thank you. you so much. Okay, Supervisor Chukri. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as we all know, this is my last formal board meeting as a Maricopa County Supervisor. And as I reflect on my nine years in this role, one pre prevailing memory comes to mind, and that's the Maricopa County family. You have heard me use this term often, and it is for good reason. After all, to most people, Family is everything, and that is no different in this case. I have been asked in recent weeks what I will miss most after my departure, and it is just that, uh, the people of Maricopa County's family. The same individuals, past and present, that helped me make a difference along the way. First and foremost, by cutting red tape, streamlining our personnel processes to be more reflective of that of the private sector, and not allowing tenure and other factors to compromise good talent. The innovators that worked with us changing for the better how we make capital investments. And in one example, by turning a one-time jail into office space. And yes, the creativity to place courtrooms inside our new jail to streamline efficiencies and keep our residents safe. I will say it's the business mindset and government that has made Maricopa County best in class. Serving my constituents, problem solving, and leading in the way the past nine years has been an honor. This past spring, I made the decision that this would be my third and last term on the Board of Supervisors. I have always said that public office doesn't complete me and strive to uphold the public service model I believe in, of serving courageously, admirably, honorably, and with humility. I did not anticipate stepping down early, but realize in life there is a season for everything, even when we don't realize that season is upon us. The political landscape changed for the worse this year. The environment is wrought with toxicity and all the civility and decorum no longer seem to have a place. And sadly, good people aren't permitted to focus on the jobs they are elected to do. There was a time in politics when you could disagree on issues during the day and still share a meal that same night. It seems to no longer be the case. Many people have approached me and asked me to reconsider my resignation and that the events of recent weeks does not, re does not warrant a resignation, including my wife and my family, uh, Christine, who were opposed to my resigning. And to be clear, there was no scandal, there was no cover up, there's no scam or other poppycock. However, it is time to step aside as these events have served as a tipping point to turn the page to the next chapter in my life. My stepping down early from my term is about taking a stand against the toxic nature of politics today, to demonstrate that some elected officials don't need to clutch their public office and can let go to demonstrate the need to do better and that good people won't enter and will leave public service. And personally to honor members of my family who gave up far greater and sacrificed much more to take their own stand. As I step away from this role, I plan to focus on bringing civility back to public service and the political arena. I plan to still serve my community and constituents as a private citizen any way I can. I will miss all of you, especially the amazing talent and elegance of my Chief of Staff Paige Gonzalez and Deputy Chief of Staff Nicole Bindle, who have been with me for so many years and served our constituents with grace and excellence. And to my colleagues, to Joy Rich and the more than 13,000 county employees, I will remember our laughter, our disappointments, and our triumphs for many years to come. May God bless all of you with happiness, good health, and all that the future has to offer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Steve. Vice Chair Gates. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, uh, thank you, uh, Supervisor Chukri, for those remarks, and I wish you the very best in the future. Supervisor Hickman. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Steve, uh, li listen, it's been a it's been a pleasure and an honor to serve with you on this board. Um, I just wanted to thank you for your service to the community. I know I, <laughs> our lives are so intertwined, Steve, between our families and uh, what we both do for a living outside of this. And I just want you to, to wish you the, the best of luck. I know I'll be seeing you. I know you'll be carrying a strong voice for District 2, no matter where you are. Uh, it's a vital district to this county. It's got great leadership in it. Uh, and uh, I just want to thank you for your service. And I also wanted to uh, wish Paige and Nicole uh, well. I know Paige is, uh, Nicole is staying, uh, living in my district and staying uh, involved in government in, in my district. I look forward to running into her and, and Paige. Uh, it's always been a pleasure uh, dealing with, with your staff. And uh, I wish them well too in their new endeavors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Steve. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, just like to echo uh, the comments that have been made by, by uh, Supervisor Hickman and uh, Mr. Gates. Um, Steve, we're, we're going to miss you. Uh, our paths will cross again, I'm sure, in one way or another. Um, I can tell you this, Mr. Chairman, when, uh, when I was first elected to this board, the only one the only uh, supervisor really that I had any type of relationship with was with Shukri. I, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, uh, his hat as the restaurant association there at the Capitol, we, we knew him there. And, uh, and unfortunately, um, when I, well, it shouldn't be unfortunate, fortunately, it should be more fortunately, when I got here, him and I went to go have lunch. I was a new kid on the block, didn't know too much about the, the uh, the county and in, in terms of uh, how it maneuvered and and, and how it worked, uh, he was able to help and really guide us. Paige and Nicole have been awesome. Paige, <clears throat> congratulations on your new venture. Uh, we wish her well. Nicole, thank you so much. I can tell you, uh, Chris and and John and and David now. Uh, we have couldn't be more happier to to have an office uh, like District Two to be able to help us out uh, to just answer just basic questions and help us guide us as we uh, started here at the county. Um, you know, I I don't know what else to say, but I I can tell you this. So I want I wanted to mention this. Uh, when I had lunch with Mr. Shukri, I had to, I was trying to convince him that I wasn't going to uh, 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 be the Steve Gallardo that he probably knew at the legislature. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I took on some very tough issues there at the Capitol, but I, 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 I told him at that time that I, I, I intended to be a team player. I want to be able to learn the county. I want to be able to advocate for District 5. And uh, he did help me uh, guide my guide our office through uh, through many uh, different issues. Steve, we we celebrated many wins and we comforted each other when things didn't go well. Uh, I can only say I wish you well. I know our paths will cross again, and uh, you you know you'll always you're always a friend, and uh, continue to uh, look forward to working with you uh, in years to come. Thank you, Steve, for your service. Thank you, Steve. And, and Steve, I will, I will second the remarks that have been made by my fellow colleagues. Uh, I don't know how many people know, but, but Steve Chukri and I go back long before I became a county supervisor. We both uh, were working with General Motors and uh, supporting uh, them in the community here. So Steve, I wish you the best going forward. One thing I do, one other thing I do want to mention though is yesterday I had the opportunity to tour our election headquarters. I spent about an hour there and it was really, really educating, educating uh, because they're in the middle of processing an election. So I was able to see signature verification work, got to talk to the people that, that uh, are doing all of this real work. And anyone that had the opportunity to see what I saw yesterday would never question the integrity of that operation. They, they are the best of the best. What an impressive thing uh, they're doing. It's no wonder that our, 
our elections group have won national recognition for the work they've done. And, and I just can't tell you how much I appreciate them. And I, I feel bad every day for the noise that goes on out there that suggests that there's anything wrong with anything that they did. Because if you got to see what I saw yesterday, uh, you would agree that this is really one of the best operations anywhere. Hey, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Ms. Ms. Mr. Chairman, if I can, I, I'm so glad you brought that up because I think it's a, well, I'm sorry, I'm so glad you brought that up. I kind of forgot yesterday was election day. Um, I, I went to the polling site for the first time. I'm an early voter, always vote early. Uh, this particular election, I wanted to go to the polling site and I went to the one in Tolleson and um, uh, went there, I wanted to experience it, I wanted to see how, how things operated. And um, I didn't know any of the, uh, the, the, the board workers there. I couldn't tell you what party affiliation they were. I couldn't tell you their names. But I couldn't be more pleased with the process. I couldn't be more pleased with the uh, hardworking board workers that are there, uh, professionalism, they they were well trained. They I had I had a couple of questions. They were able to answer them, um, but it just shows you uh, when when Mr. Chukri talks about the best in class, it is our elections department. And as much criticism they have, may have gotten and continue to get, um, we have a number one team down there, and they do a superb job. Many of the volunteers and the and the, uh, the uh, part-time workers that come and help us out. I know there's hundreds and thousands of, 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 of folks that come in and help us out, but we're talking just a class act team here, very professional, very knowledgeable, couldn't be more pleased. Um, you know, if there's ever any time we can plant our flag, and we can plant our flag in a lot of different areas, it is definitely uh, in the area of elections. So couldn't be more pleased, I wanted to point that out. Well, and thank you. And, and something that I that I said to the group yesterday uh, when I spoke to them was that I, I am so impressed with the recorder that we have today because it would have been so easy for him to say, it wasn't my election, so don't talk to me about it. I had no responsibility for it. But he went into that group. He learned what they do. He saw, I mean, he knows every detail about everything they do and recognized how, how efficient and uh, and what expertise they have in that group for what they're doing. And so he's become, uh, you know, and, and I, I gained appreciation yesterday for why he's become such a strong advocate for that group and supporting what they do because he's got to see it all firsthand. And, and I think as of yesterday, he told me that he had visited 15 voting sites. So, you know, very involved. He, he really does get into the nuts and bolts. He understands what they're doing and what an impressive, impressive group. So I, I can't thank them enough. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I, I'm sorry. Um, it, thank you for bringing that up. Um, I want to tell you something that, that occurred last night. Um, last night when I was driving home, uh, I believe from my, my other job, it was about Oh, and uh, he answered the phone, and uh, he was in, in the middle of his team. He was there at McTech. He's in the middle of the team, still making sure that this election was rolling smoothly. And it was gratifying uh, to talk to him that we've now had an election, again, uh, really, that has gone so smoothly for our municipalities and our school boards. Uh, and... Uh, thanked him for that, and he told me point blank, well, uh, you, you know, you just missed Jack, and he was here too. So thank you uh, for being such a, a great chairman during another election that you felt it was important enough to go down there and, and make sure the morale uh, was up, but also see what they do. So so thank you for your service uh, in, in the way of being a chairman, and thank you, Stephen Richer. There was a lot of people looking at this this election, and it, again, once again, just went smooth as silk because of the great people that he has there. So thank you for giving me the option to say that. Thank you, Clint. Okay, being no further business, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>